Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I'm coming by today real quick to um, share a tutorial with you on using liquid Sculpey. There's a billion things you can do with this um, with this product and the packaging probably looks different now. I have no idea. I've had this one for years. Um, you can use it for uh, coating your projects, you can use it for gluing pieces together that you're going to bake. You can use it for decorating projects that you've made. You can use it for making projects. It really is endless what you can use it for. Today I'm just going to be using it to coat these pieces. Okay. I've just got a couple of stamps, um, a crown, which is off at Oriental Trading Company stamp set. And just a light little bit of text. As you can see, I'm not pressing very hard. Okay. Well, here's what we've got. Okay. And yes, I will wash my stamps off in a bit. Okay, so as far as colors go, I'm going to use some Inca Gold. And let's go, because I haven't done one of these colors, a little green. Okay. Just a little to start out with. And then, and then, get my knife out, and we'll decide on the shape. And I really like this area right over here. Don't discard those pieces. You can use them for something else. Use them for a pair of earrings or some accessory beads. Okay. Something like that. Now we can either poke a hole in it or we can bake it like it is and then sandwich our bale between the front and the back. And I think that's what we'll do. So I'm going to bake this just like it is and I'll be back. Well, 
real quick before I throw this in the oven here is how I would get a matching bead I would take a scrap and a small core and just wrap that small core with the scrap. Now it's not going to look exactly like a crown or anything else. It's just going to give you the same color scheme. Okay, just like that. And then I'd ream a hole through it and bake it at the same time. Alright, I'm going to throw these in the oven now. Okay, here it is out of the oven. And I have um, used this stamp with some Versamark and put some embossing powder just in a little bit here and there. I haven't heat set it yet. This is a piece of gold that I rolled out and smushed on my texture sheet just to give it some texture. And I've got a head pin. Just going to really quick make a bail. head off of there. Alright, and now we've got our little bell with the little legs, our little anchor sticking out. Okay. And then I'm going to take some liquid Sculpey just because I can. It's not necessary. But because I already have the embossing powder on the front. I don't want to have to mash it too hard. Okay. Alright. Let's heat set that. I just heat my heat gun up off to the side so that it's good and hot before I put it over my clay. Of course, we've partially baked the clay by doing that, but it's okay, it won't hurt anything. Okay. I'll put these two pieces together, and then we're going to bake them in the oven. We're going to bake these one more time before we put the liquid Sculpey on. I could do it um, both at the same time, but I've got every possibility of my backing sliding around and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and bake it first. But as you can see right here, we've got a little bit. There we go. 
where our clay did not meet up because of the bale. So just fix that really quick and then off we go. Alright, here's the two scraps for the earrings, and uh, I'm just going to heat set those real quick. By the way, I am baking that on uh, 270 on the recommended temperature for um, 30 minutes, I believe I stuck it in there for. Alright. The earrings won't need a backing on them because they are, uh, because they have the necessity to be lighter. So, um, the earrings are usually just one-sided. Okay, I shall be back. Okay, <clears throat> now here's the piece out of the oven. <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is to decide what you're going to bake it on because the most important thing is for it to be level in the oven. So I'm going to bake it on my little tile here. You can use a sheet of paper uh, you know, cardstock would work just fine. Um, cookie sheet. And I'm going to bake this, even though the instructions tell you to bake it at 275 to 300. I'm going to bake it at the 275. And then use my heat gun afterwards to um, help make it clear. I just find that easier than trying to get it clear in the oven because ovens are very different in temperature and mine is different darn near every time you use it so I'm just gonna put a what looks like a thick layer but it's really a thin layer And what you can see is I intentionally started back from the edge because what you don't want is for it to spill over. Okay, so we've got a layer on and we've let it level out a little bit. Then you just want to go back and very carefully hit the edge. It's 
Sorry, I hope I'm still on frame. In frame. Okay. And then I'm going to very carefully <laughs> carry it back over to my oven and bake it for the last time. Again, trying to keep it very level while I'm carrying it and as I set it in the oven. Alright. When you put it in the oven, the other thing you want to be careful of is if you use something to tint your <coughs> baking container, wax paper, foil, anything like that, make sure that it doesn't touch the top of the piece while it's in the oven. Alright, I'm going to do the earrings, but I'm not, I'm going to bake them separately. I'm not going to try to fit them both gently in the oven. <laughs> Okay, now here it is out of the oven. Don't panic. <laughs> I know your instinct will be to panic, but don't. Because we will clear it up with the, uh, with the heat gun. And like I said, you can do it in the oven. I've got black paint all over me. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Alright, I'm going to heat my heat gun up off camera again. Because what you're going to want is for your heat gun to get smoking hot. And you can burn the clay, but it's not easy. So don't, don't be too worried about it. But you keep your heat gun moving. And you're just going to want to slowly heat the whole thing. As you can see, it's already starting to get a little more transparent. And when you've heated uh, liquid sculpey enough, it, the surface will change. It will become slightly glossy on the top and that's what you want And if you feel like you've gotten your heat gun hot enough or you start to smell burning clay, you can stop in between and restart. And you just want to keep going and keep going until you've got it where it's clear enough. And this is why I said it's not an exaggeration when I said it takes a bit of work to get it that clear, but it's worth it. was turn it off and turn it around. Alright, we'll let that cool off for just a minute. And I'll come back and show you how transparent it really is. Okay. 
here it is. Oh, my fumbly fingers. Okay. Really, here it is. As you can see, it turned out really pretty and clear. Let's see if I can get it really close up. Yeah, it looks like that's as close as it's going to let me get. If you could see the depth on it, but Alright, so there's that, and then here's the earrings. Okay. There we go. I hope that helps. There's lots of things you can do to, um, coat clay. This is a dimensional alternative to some of the other products out there. Now I've not used um, uh -huh. I've not used the diamond glaze and I know a lot of people do use that. Um, but as far as the uh, resin, like the UV resin, this is definitely an alternative, although the, re the resin is clearer. Um, no doubt about it. You can see the resin is definitely more transparent. Not a lot, but it is more transparent. Uh, this piece right here is already spoken for. Got to go back and put a tassel off the bottom. Really cute. All right. So. I hope that answered your questions. If you have any more, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. And evidently this piece will be going up in the shop later. <laughs> Alright. Seriously though, um, I've got a lot more coming up. <laughs> I've got a big Halloween project that I'm working on. So, Alright, that's all I've got for today. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.